This is a picture of a nephron, the microscopic tubule that is the functional unit of the kidney. One of the most important functions of the kidney is its ability to control the concentration of urine. The concentration, or osmolarity, is a measure of how much water is excreted by the kidneys. When the body needs to get rid of excess water, kidneys excrete large amounts of dilute urine at a low osmolarity. Conversely, when, uh, when kidneys want to conserve water, urine becomes quite concentrated. Kidneys control urine concentration by varying amounts of water and sodium ions reabsorbed in the distal nephron. This is where permeability comes into play. To produce dilute urine, the, the kidneys need to reabsorb, reabsorb urine without al allowing water to follow by osmosis. This means that cell membranes must not be permeable to water. To produce concentrated urine, the nephron has to reabsorb water while leaving solute in the tubule lumen. To see how this all works, let's follow, let's follow some filtered fluid through a nephron to see where the changes occur. Filtrate entering the loop, filtrate en entering the loop of Henle, here, this is the loop of Henle, zoomed in from over here. Filtrate entering the loop of Henle has a higher osmolarity, around 300. The filtrate leaving it, however, is, hy is hypoosmotic with an osmolarity of around 100, a third of what it was before. This change happens when cells in, th in the thick part of the loop transport sodium, chloride, and potassium ions out of the tubule lumen. These cells are so unusual because unlike most cells, they have an, an apical, apical sur surface, which is not permeable to water. Most cells are permeable to water. So when these cells so when these cells move, move the solute of the lumen, the water cannot follow. This creates a hypoosmotic solution. Now that the hypoosmotic ha solution has left the loop of Henle, so going back to this picture, so here's the loop of Henle. Um, its concentration is determined by its water, per water permeability. In the distal, tube distal tubule, right here, see? and the collecting duct cells, which is kind of the next step, um, where, th where the next step occurs. Um, if, if, the, if the distal tubule and the collecting, the collecting duct cells are not permeable to the water, water stays in the tubule and the fluid stays dilute. If, if the distal tubule and collecting duct cells are permeable to water, the water will follow by osmosis and the fluid will not will be concentrated instead of dilute. So how do these distal tubule how does how does the distal tubule and collecting duct cells alter their permeability to water? This is what we have this is what we have why we have the the posterior pituitary hormone vasopressin for. Vasopressin controls the addition and removal of water pores in the apical membrane as mentioned before. The um, because the vasopressin causes the body to retain water, it is also called antidiuretic hormone, or ADH. Diuresis is the removal of excess water in urine, so you can see why it's called antidiuretic. When vasopressin acts on cells, water pores are present in the apical membrane, which allows water to move out by osmosis because concentration in cells and, and the, inside the cells and the interstitial fluid is higher than in the tubule. Without vasopressin, the collecting duct is impermeable to water, even though there's a concentration, even though there's a concentration gradient, water stays in the tubule, which creates dilute urine. Um, contrary to what I've said before, um, kind of suggests um, whether or not um, a surface um, or a membrane is permeable to water is not all or nothing. It depends on the amount of vasopressin that's present. And um, this variable um, amount of vasopressin is what makes, what allows the body to match the urine concentration to the body's needs specifically. And that's it.